Hello, I'm Ruth Anna Fawkes and I'm Director at TU Automotive and I'm here today at Insurance Telematics Europe and we have got with us Tim Marlowe who is the Programme Director at Aegeus. So welcome Tim. Thank you Rosanna. It's great to have you here today. Nice to be here. And uh, as I just mentioned I'm really excited to talk to you today as it's a subject close to my own heart mm -hmm. in the months of research I've recently been conducting. So um, would you like to talk to us a little bit about your role at AGS and what you're currently yeah. looking at? Okay, I look, look after everything that's really to do with vehicle innovation. Right. So that encompasses um, developments in telematics, developments in connected car and particularly um, in ADAS and autonomy systems. Fantastic. So we'll come on to that because mm -hmm. obviously that's the focus, but you say about the developments in the connected car and telematics mm -hmm. and how it's obviously going to affect the insurance business going forward. So what are the kind of things that you're looking at aside from the ADAS? I mean, what are the innovations that are currently going on? Um, I think there, there is a great deal going on with, mm -hmm. uh, with different manufacturers and their, and their tier one suppliers. Um, we're, as I said, very interested in um, the amount of built-in telematics mm -hmm. capability that's now um, appearing in the, in the modern car and also how that then links into um, the various um, ADAS and other, other systems within the vehicles. Okay, fantastic. So, um, one question that I've, I've had for a while about um, the ADAS systems is obviously mm -hmm. how it's going to affect pricing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got a vehicle that is equipped and is supposedly and is proven to be a lot safer just with its technology and its own internal infrastructures and software. How is that going to affect insurance pricing? I think it already has. Right. Um, there are a number of vehicles now that uh, have, for example, autonomous emergency braking. Mm -hmm. um, it tends not to go under that na name. It might be um, city safety, as Volvo call yeah. it, or it might be um, city emergency braking, as I think the VW call it. Right. Uh, but in, in essence, autonomous emergency braking systems are already now starting uh, to impact insurance pricing. And that's done, um, as we'll hear later on this afternoon mm -hmm. from uh, my friends at Thatcham, through the, uh, the group rating system. If a vehicle has what, um, one of those systems fitted on it as standard, or a variant of the vehicle mm -hmm. has it fitted mm -hmm. as standard, it will attract a lower group rating um, than an equivalent vehicle that doesn't have autonomous emergency braking. Okay, so other than the, the emergency braking, I mean, what else is, is coming through that you're looking at that's going to have an impact? There are a number of, of, um, of different systems being uh, developed at the moment and systems that are being tested and evaluated um, by the likes of Thatcham and other mm -hmm. um, research companies. Um, if there will be systems that will steer automatically. We already have things like lane keeping assistance, mm -hmm. we already have adaptive cruise control. Um, that in itself has a, a number of variants um, and of, of those the, the most effective um, is the one that will uh, work all the way down to a stop. Right. So that you can be doing 70 mile an hour along the motorway, mm -hmm. and if the traffic comes to a halt in front of you and you have adaptive cruise control engaged, it will stop. It will stop you safely um, before you hit any anybody in front of you because it will detect those vehicles. And first of all, it, it works in itself. Mm -hmm. And then, if there is anything at the last minute, the autonomous emergency braking also kicks in, and you've got a. Uh, something that will, package. that will prevent a lot of motorway pileups. Right, I see. So what's the process of, of deciding you know, the level of risk that these systems will negate or remove? That's really a, a matter of research Okay. Um, and very extensive testing. Uh, now the insurance industry, as I've, I've mentioned, has um, the, its own vehicle research uh, capability down at Thatcham mm -hmm. and they do a lot of this testing work and it is through their results that we're able to understand exactly what okay. the impact of any particular system is likely to be. Now some of this is in, we know they've done the work on autonomous emergency braking, some of the other things mm -hmm. are in relatively early stages okay. at the moment because it's something that's developing rapidly at the moment. Well, you just said it's developing rapidly and that, that definitely is the case. So, I mean, one of the time frames that it normally takes from the awareness of a technology being developed or coming into a vehicle, let's say, to it being um, known how that should be integrated into pricing. 
Um, it does take a bit of time, certainly, mm. because um, if the, the the vehicle manufacturers do have um, fairly frequent conversations with um, with Thatcham, and, and therefore they under they understand what's coming and how to yeah. test it, um, and then that that in itself will happen as part of um, the uh, the Euro NCAP certification process. Thatcham being the main centre yes, in the UK for. Um, Euro NCAP testing. So another question on everybody's lips which nobody has managed to be able to give me an answer for yet but I'm hoping you can at least get some way of the way if, if not provide mm -hmm. something more solid. Um, is the autonomous vehicle? So we've obviously, you know, there's, there's the ADAS services coming in mm -hmm. and the next step is automated driving which some people, you know, different definitions of that and then the autonomous vehicle in the future. Um, this obviously throws up loads of questions about the business model for insurers. Indeed it does. I mean, I could ask you lots of specific things here, but let's just go with, what are you guys thinking? What, what's, <laughs> the, what's the kind of thought process at the moment? Um, it, I think thought processes are, um, whilst some way developed, are not fully formed, because mm. it's something that's, that, as I said, it's developing rapidly. Um, there's, there's a great deal of, of research to be done along the way. But in essence, as vehicles become more autonomous, um, mm. and there are various definitions of autonomy, but the one that ten tends to be used as a standard now is the, um, the SAE system, which runs from level zero, which is no automation whatsoever, yeah. through to level five, which is the fully automated, no steering wheel, no pedals, yeah. the sort of Google pod that everybody's seen. Um, yeah. in, in just about any article about yeah. autonomous cars. <laughs> it's every day, isn't it, as well? <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the thinking is that as it, as it becomes more autonomous, the, the risk will move from the driver to the manufacturer of the vehicle okay. um, and all the, uh, the systems within it. Um, whether that's a smooth transition mm. or whether, in fact, um, there may be a point at which actually all of a sudden things become significantly less risky mm -hmm. is something that will determine over the coming months and years. Okay, so there's that grey area of the the level three, isn't there? Yep. Where it's the is the driver in control? Is the vehicle in control? Did the mistake come because the vehicle didn't alert the driver to take control effectively, or did the driver not respond to the alert? Level three is very very interesting. Yes. Um, from an insurance perspective. And from a safety perspective, it may perversely be more risky than level two, mm. simply because there is confusion about who is in control exactly. of the vehicle. It is not explicit in the in the standard. Um, in, in some cases, whilst it is in the auto, auto, um, autonomous use case, mm -hmm. um, the the driver is in control. Sorry, the, the the car is in control, and the driver can do other things. Yeah. Um, my worry about that is, well, actually, if the car then gets into a problem and it dumps control back to the driver, that's very much equivalent to a commercial airliner suddenly switching off the autopilot <laughs> and dumping the pilot back into a problem, yeah. which has led to a number of quite yes. serious incidents. The, yeah. uh, the Air France one that went into the Atlantic yes. being the, exactly. the, the classic example. I know, I know. So I guess it's then a, just a keep watching, keep waiting and making incremental developments as, as and when required. I think there, there are incremental developments in, in active safety mm -hmm. and in active safety that is the vehicle taking control mm -hmm. and bailing out the driver rather than the other way around. Yeah. Now some of those are only at level one like autonomous emergency braking. Some of them are at level two like traffic jam assistance where there is both longitudinal and, and, yeah. uh, and lateral control. Um, but until you get to the point where if there is a problem, the, the vehicle is able to deal with it, and that really comes at level four. Mm. And as long as there is clear definition at level four that I'm going to drive for this bit, and then I'm going to hand over to you. And if you don't take control, I'm going to find somewhere to park that's safe yeah. until you are in a position to take control. Mm -hmm. Um, that then becomes a completely different ball game, and actually, the, the difference between that and level five, whilst the autonomous systems are engaged, are probably 
not so great. It's a tricky area, a it, tricky area, it isn't is, it? It is a very tricky mm. area, yes, and we have to um, address all the areas mm. of liability. Um, there will need to be legal framework around that as mm. well as, um, if, if you like, an insurance framework. Yeah. I guess it's the, the biggest shake-up that auto insurance has seen or needed to see for quite some time, isn't it? I think it? it certainly will be, yes. Yeah. And, and, and how it will actually affect the market mm. um, is something that we are certainly looking at at the certainly. moment. Well, I think on that note, it's a good place to leave it, so with okay. some good food for thought there. But um, thank you very much okay. for, your, for your time and your, your insights. Thank you, Ruth Anna.